Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is Cold Killer. Today, I'm going to teach you the basics of scratching. Scratching is a great way to make yourself stand out from all the other DJs out there. Scratching is basically moving the record forwards and backwards and turning that sound on and off using the crossfader. It used to be that you would have to have one high quality turntable and a high quality mixer to get good results when scratching. That has changed a little bit today. You can also scratch with CDJs and other types of gear such as the all-in-one units um, for Serato and also for Tractor. I myself use two turntables, Technics turntables, and one rain mixer. Let's take a look at the mixer. The mixer contains a crossfader for turning the sound on and off and two volume faders for each turntable. My mixer also contains a crossfader reverse switch. This will reverse the direction of the crossfader. It's a good idea when you scratch to turn down the low frequency of your EQ. This will help to eliminate feedback and hum from the turntable. Now that you're familiar with the equipment, let's begin. To scratch in its most basic form, you will simply be moving the record forwards and backwards. The second component of scratching is turning the volume of the scratch on and off by using the crossfader. This can help to create other percussive sounds from your scratch. It's a good idea as you're getting started scratching to determine which direction of the crossfader feels most comfortable to you. I personally scratch reverse or as it's known hamster style. This means that the crossfader will point away from the record that is playing. The traditional method is to point the crossfader towards the record that is playing. This also has its advantages and disadvantages. It's important to see which way feels right to you. There is no right or wrong way, but you will pretty much be stuck with the choice once you really commit to it. So take care and take time to feel which is best for you. First, let's look at a scratch known as the baby scratch. This is simply moving the record forwards and backwards. This simple act can be more difficult than it appears due to the fact that the turntable platter is spinning underneath the record. There is something that we like to call the touch that you will develop as you continue to scratch that generally means you have a feeling for the record and a touch that it takes to get a very clean and good sounding scratch. Always learn a new scratch by starting very slowly and gradually speeding up. Let's practice the baby scratch. Another very important fundamental technique is simply playing the record and then turning the crossfader off before you rewind the record. Practice this as often as you can. Take care not to simply release the record. You'll want to give it a slight push to help make up for the torque that is lost by continuing to move the record forwards and backwards or stopping the movement of the record on the platter. This slight push will feel like second nature once you've begun to improve your scratching, but it's very important to take the time to get the feeling for this, as well as the baby scratch and some other techniques that I will be covering soon. Now let's look at a technique known as the stab. The stab is simply playing the record and then turning the sound off using the crossfader before rewinding the record to its original position. The stab can be combined with the baby scratch simply by turning the crossfader on or off in different rhythms. The motion of your hand on the record should be consistent. There are different ways to perform the stab. 
you can push the record forward quickly for a more high pitched sound or push it more slowly for a lower pitch sound. You may also release the record to allow it to play at its normal speed. This can be quite challenging when done at a higher tempo. Once you have a good grasp of the baby scratch and the stab, it's a good idea to practice combinations of the stab into the baby and also the baby scratch into the stab. Try to variate the rhythms and see what you can come up with. Scratching basically started off with combinations of these two techniques. Let's look at a technique known as the scribble. The scribble can be thought of as a double time baby scratch. If you're scratching to a tempo, if you double the speed exactly of the baby scratch, you have a scribble. Let's try doing a scribble into a stab and scribbles into baby scratches and variations of these techniques. And there you have it. Please continue to practice the techniques taught in this video as they are very important and are the foundation of all the scratches that I'll be covering in my future tutorial videos. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop me a message or comment below. Thanks and happy scratching.